There is still a little bit of a delay, but we thought we'd come back, chat a little bit about, let's find some hope. Let's find some hope for Kate Gunners. Let's make that our task of the next five to 10 minutes, whatever it might be. Because there is, I mean, there has been, to be fair, Luminosity uh, after Academy. So obviously make it to the finals there, drop that 0-3 uh, to Fnatic. And they come back, and since then, they have lost a match to Winterfox. There were some ping issues in that one. Uh, they've lost a match against TSM. They lost two games to, uh, two maps to Selfless. And they've also lost yeah. a map against Cloud9. So uh, still coming back from uh, Katowice. I mean, still, let's, let's not, you know, over-exaggerate. They're still largely dominant in the North American region, but they have shown a little bit of cracks here and there, at least. Yeah, they actually, they were knocked out of the Army Power Invitation, or more specifically by Selfless there. Uh, then going 2-1 in the set, they pick up the first map on Mirage, which is to be expected, considering it's Luminosity, and they're going against the North Americans on Mirage, which is like their territory here. Right. But then they drop it on Cash and Overpass there, so... But it's weird, too, because considering the fact they do win the Mirage map, then they go a couple weeks later, just two days ago, they lose a map against TSM on Mirage, which is probably the strangest one out of all of them there. You said that, like, TSM of all teams. Like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> what, what have we seen from TSM of late? This is not true. That much. We have not seen much from TSM. So we are getting word the players are joining the new server, uh, and we'll be into that as soon as possible. And this is interesting. They did lose that Overpass match, and it is going to be on Overpass, which is a map that they've been um, they've been very strong on overall. I mean, they, they've taken Navi to have some very, very close games, very competitive games. Um, and that, those have been some of the best, best matches of Counter-Strike that we've seen at tournaments in recent memory. So uh, very interesting that they that they actually dropped that. Uh, but as you can see up on the board here, just the disparity between these two teams, 12 and two going up against 0 and 10. Uh, this is not looking like it's going to be X Team AGG's day. Not much of an improvement, unfortunately, from last season either. I think they had to go into relegation, and they just managed to qualify. I forget who they had to play against exactly. I remember it was like leader one at the time, but I might be incorrect on that. Uh, but they weren't able to beat them there in the best of three relegation set. They've come back, but unfortunately, we just have not seen too much of an improvement. In fact, if you look at their season two record, it's gotten much worse right now. Already sitting at 10 losses, they still have plenty more matches to play, but if it doesn't improve soon, things could be looking extremely dire. They have a lot more games to play coming into the closing part of the season. We really haven't seen a whole lot of improvements for this team. And if you guys do want to follow along to see how and when that team X team AGG is going to get their first win of the season, you can do that with the Score Esports app. You can download that from the Google Play Store or the App Store. Uh, and you can track all the statistics, who's doing well, who's not doing so well as they try and find their first win of the season. Also, obviously, we have uh, plenty more of Pro League to go over the next uh, few weeks, so keep track of all of our schedule. Look forward to some matches and figure out when exactly you want to tune into the broadcast that we'll be having, the teams you want to watch. Yeah, definitely. And, um, yeah, also, I mean, throughout the evening as well, I mean, we follow on social, make sure you're tweeting at us. Use the hashtag ESL uh, Pro League on top of everything. Send us your thoughts, your analysis, uh, and, and we are actually going to take one more break, so we'll be right back in a few moments. short-lived break that time around. We did just conclude the knife round as soon as we went to break. All 10 joined into the server, so we're going to get right into the game here as the pistol round is beginning for you, so no more delays. We're going to get to see Luminosity take on Kaykona's in what could be a little bit of a slaughter. Still kicking over that new name. <laughs> Luminosity <laughs> did win the knife round, by the way, guys. Apologies for missing that, but they are going to be starting off on CT side. No surprises there at all. 
which means for Kaykonas, they are going to have to jump onto this T side where things may start up a little bit brutal. Thankfully, though, it does play into their benefits slightly when you consider that for a lot of these lower tier North American teams, that they often just prefer the T side because it's a much looser environment. It's much easier to adjust yourself, especially for more inexperienced IGLs. On the CT side, things can get really chaotic, and if you're not really working together as a five-man unit, then the communication can break down really easily and you just get completely overwhelmed by more advanced teams like Luminosity. Yeah, it is much easier to just kind of group up and hope then uh, and try and get the trades to go into your favor on that terrorist side. But like you said, Luminosity, I mean, this is going to be very interesting to see what kind of stance Luminosity comes out and if they're just going to be aggression, if they're going to try and just get it over with, you know, the mercy killing essentially, you know, just just get this first map out of the way, maybe catch up on some of these early delays. Uh, but either way, um, this is, I don't think either of us hold out a lot of hope for Kaykonas in this match. They do have Ocean. I mean, that is that is one thing going for him. They have Ocean. And the, uh, the K-Kona master yeah. himself. <laughs> I think one hope, if there was going to be any for K-Konas, is obviously twist a little bit this younger talent that was being talked about. I think he's only like 16 years old. And he was coming into this team kind of hot off of, off of kind of like a little bit of a pug star before he joined onto this squad. But as I mentioned earlier, kind of quiet since joining it. Ruru has actually been much better off, statistically speaking, for this team. Had some really good improvements. And statistically as well, has been one of the more consistent players for this squad. But again, the problem is that it's great, but it's not like amazing. And that's not something that can completely pull this team over the edge to beat someone like Luminosity. So that's going to be the big edge here. They also have, a, they also have Invert, who is the unfortunate... Uh, player, if you've seen that clip that came out, I think last week, I think Olaf Meister tweeted it about North American Counter-Strike against CLG. Uh, Dust 2 inverts the one who throws the Molotov in the window and it kind of burns himself alive by his own by his own fire. So hopefully we don't see any of that. But either way, here is some aggression early on from Luminosity. FNX pushing up, trying to take a peek. Fur is going to be pushing up towards A long. He's going to get the first shots. He's a massive amount of bodies. Nice headshot. Trying to go for a second, being very patient, but he can't land it. Too many glocks to deal with. Stick around for quite a while, too. So FNX is not going to be moving over there through the bathroom connector, just falling back into the A-bomb site. These players are going to get ready to stop a push coming from A long, but that's not exactly what K-Konus is going to be doing. They move down that bathroom connector and chip themselves inside of the regular connector itself and just push over towards the B-bomb site instead. Yeah, smoke is out as well. It's going to obscure Taka, but cold up top and balcony. He's going to have a decent angle. There it is, one headshot for him, just trying to take a couple pre-fire shots. Now he's swinging out wide and it's brutal. Ocean falls, a little bit of a jump. But so far, this has been all luminosity. Taco just waiting and biding his time before slaughtering Elsa. Now it's pretty much all over. There you go. That's how things are going to start off as k -Konas. They managed to get the plan, but they can't evacuate themselves away towards construction or anywhere under the tracks to try and get themselves into a post plant situation. It's cold, mainly a long subsistence coming in there from Taco that just absolutely shuts them down. And a fairly simplistic retake comes in to give Luminosity their first round. I mean, yeah, they didn't really have to retake too much. Look at these kills they're getting before they even enter into the bomb site. That is disgusting from Cole, that second shot. And then even Taco just swinging out uh, from very, very quickly right from behind that corner. So first round is all Luminosity. The bomb does get planted, so it looks like Kate Cone is going to buy their time, be a little bit patient in this one. They upgrade some pistols. They have one flashbang to work with. Uh, better be a god tier flash, but they are more than likely going to go for the rifles into the third round. Now taking a look at exactly how this is going to play off here. Invert leads the charge, but on. Unfortunately, Fur is waiting there. He does get dinked down to 15 HP, but he still manages to execute Twist so that elsewhere on the map, FNX is going to find the final frag on Ocean. Yeah, these first two rounds have opened up, uh, if you're a Kekona's fan, not too well. That was a slaughter from Fur. Nicely timed Nade as well, patiently holding onto it, just knowing the countdown, knowing the timer, and it lands perfectly on a couple different members. Uh, so here come the AK-47s. There's still a scout on Fall and SMG on Defer. Four kills, I mean, he did make massive amounts of bank in that round, so that's very, very positive. And now they're just going for a very fast play towards the B. Bomb site, four members here. They do slow it down. They're going to take control of short sewers. Cold going for a flash of key. There's Taco. They take him out, but they might not be aware of Cold on the side. They do now. He exposes himself. He gives up his position, but finds a kill. It's the bomb as well, so you can start to see some rotations coming in. Spraying through the smoke, massive damage. And Ocean swings out, but his other teammates didn't get the message. Twist was falling back, and now a little bit more miscommunication as they run into each other in the doorway. Luminosity, no need to get aggressive just as of yet, just holding on to the site. They've barely been pressured, so Cole can get a little bit aggressive there as he pushes up, able to finish off Elves. The bomb goes onto the floor once more, and they toss a Molly over it. Finally, Cole's going to fall to Ruru as he manages to take down Cold, but now in that 2v3 with very little ground even made here by Kaykonas just in terms of getting onto this bomb site, where do they take it from here? They're still stuck outside B. They haven't really shown any signs of shifting this towards an A hit, so they just try to go for the entry. Yep, probably not going to end up going so well as Fur is able to take that position by Monster, shut down Ruru, and FNX with the support of Fur in the event. He fails the initial 1v1, takes down Twists. Fur's got $9,200 three rounds in.
free upgrade to the AK-47. He goes right back to the SMG, knowing it's going to be a save. He wants more money. Luminosity up 3-0. It's been dominant. There's only three kills out on the board for Kekona's at the moment. Yep, and of course, Kekona's not really going to be bringing too much to the table this time. Just a couple deagles, the P250s on Ruru and Ocean, so not to be expecting all that much. And most of these players pushing out a little bit of a split initially to push their players over towards Playground and by the Fountain area. And they've got a couple more in the tunnels too, but that's going to be a challenge. However, Ocean opens it up, finds the first frag on FNX, but immediately cold trading it out over by Party, finding another pickup on a twist. Fallen of the Scout has tagged Ocean down, who does have the M4, but waiting for else to peek, and there he is, pistol whips Ocean. So this is all downhill from k -Cone after that initial pickoff. Maybe a little bit over-aggressive from FNX, swings very wide, gets caught off guard, wasn't expecting a player to be on the right side of that underpass. But either way, not too much damage taken. 4-0 for Luminosity, Fur. Still wants to build up money. He's going to keep the SMG. Over aggressive, yes, but in the grand scheme of things, with that money, like you were saying, it doesn't even matter. They can eat that up easily at this point. They've barely been challenged at all by Kekonas, so they need to try and find some way to kick up the pressure against Luminosity, because if not, they're going to continue to have to suffer plays like that. This is a very strong map for Luminosity, despite some of their recent results on it. Very tactical map, so it makes sense that they would be good on it. Ocean going to be into underpass, AK-47s. Invert has the AWP, but Fallen is pushed up towards party. Grabbing an angle, waiting for someone to swing out from playground, but it's a very cautious play from Kekonas. They don't want to don't want to give up any kills this early on. Biding their time, still no progress. Ruru just holding out a flank towards B and Fallen. He's sick of it, he wants to get aggressive, but he eats a flashbang. Almost falls him. There's no way he gets out of that one. So Kekona with an early advantage here. Twist being the one to pick up that early kill on the Fallen, and that was that over-aggressive push, but you can immediately see, as soon as they lose that one guy, most of the rest of the CTs just end up falling back into these holding positions. So, hey, going is, yeah, they're feeling great. They picked up a kill, but there's no follow-up. They just stick around, and they're, they're held back spots. This positioning from Ruru, he's found perfect timing. He's already up into the B bomb site. They don't realize it just yet, and he takes a battle. He finds that kill on a taco. Such an advanced position. He hasn't been spotted whatsoever. Now it's on FNX. going to peek out towards long. There goes the op of Kekona. So he tries the equalized thing, even gets the dink, but it's all down to Fur. He's, like we said, just got that SMG because he's still working on building up towards 16k, but it looks like that might be slowed down, halted a little bit here by Kekona. So good play from Ru. However, the bomb still not shifting down to B as of yet. The rest of Kekona is sort of hiding out over here outside of the playground to see if they could find Fur early on. Not going to be the case, but Fur himself playing this pretty passively at the moment. He's trying to shift his way around the map and see if he can catch some of these guys out in the open a bit early before they solidify their push to the B-bomb site. Kona is not really messing around about it anymore, though. They're all going to regroup here on B, get that bomb to the floor, try to end this round in their favor as quickly as possible. Fur has also upgraded to an AWP, so the question for him is, how does he want to play? Does he just want to try and go for it, see how many kills he can rack up? Already getting aggressive there, picks up one into Ocean, and he's happy with that. Now going to fall back to the upper tunnels and see if he can run away. Actually, I don't think Kekona is really going to be too interested in chasing this down. They, they still don't have an economy established, and there it is, Fur with one more. Twist challenge, and he falls. Now Elsa is prepared for it, though he does find the kill on the flank. Fur not expecting it just so much. Anyway, they do lose two more members at the end, and like we said, plenty of money built up on this Luminosity side for them to buy, despite losing that round. The AWP on Fallen again, four M4s behind this. And now with Luminosity here, off to a good start, but Kekona is getting around on the board much earlier than I initially expected them to here. So maybe if they can fight this back, the, the question though is going to be the consistency of these rounds. Can they string them together? Is this just a one-off chance now where Luminosity is going to adapt and immediately crush them after this to reset the T-side economy? So the initial setup from Kekona is... It's very massive, moving some players into the playground and just outside of the upper tunnels, but beyond that, with the exception of Rue, who's sort of acting as the, the heavy pusher right now, not really doing anything else beyond that. When you can see what he's going to be able to find in that B-bomb site first. That's good on Rue, though. Apply some early pressure. He's gotten out of smoke pretty early on at about a minute and a half. The other members of Kekona haven't moved anywhere. Ocean just watching for a push and underpass. The other three members still in playground, and it's just Luminosity setting up a staunch defense in the bathrooms. Fallen's got an angle with that AWP out towards party. Could be where the first kill comes in. Invert still doesn't feel like challenging. He's the one who's farthest back and fallen here. Might have an opportunity, but they're all going to swing out towards long. They're going to clear that out. They're going to have FNX to deal with in the bathrooms. Fur as well, and fallen will still be there on that quick rotate. But FNX is going to be the one with first contact. So FNX still hiding back here. The push coming forward, but that flash not really connecting. So FNX free to find the first kill, but he doesn't realize pushing it behind him. It's going to be Ocean fallen, cutting him off though, as he tries to come up top, but they didn't pay attention to the second. Thankfully, Fur able to react in time. Ends up shutting down Ruru, and now L is working his way on the flank, but not able to connect that first kill. Pop flash is perfect, pushing him into the corner. They're going to push him, but he still finds that frag pickup. Nicely done by L's, but still immediately traded out by Fallen, taking him down, and then Cold finds the final kill on the invert. That's one of the benefits of having that defense pushed forward. You have all the intel and you have plenty of time for your teammates to rotate over to help you out. Either way, Fallen, FNX, and Fur, that's a, that's a great defense just whittling down that attack. I mean, that's the thing. 
This map is so crucially important to hold that bathrooms on either side of the team. If you're Terrace, you have to be able to push back that pressure. And, and they, while they did do it at least you know decently with a couple trades, they lose too many members trying to do that. And once the rotations come in, once Fallen readjusts his new angle, it's all over from there. Fast towards the B bomb site. Nades come out. Huge damage. And they all line up for Taco. It's an easy ace for Taco. All five kills very, very swiftly. With that, Luminosity go right back into full control here. Kekonas did decide to go for the lighter buy there previously, but as we're going to see now, Kekona is investing, and we're still not really not going to have a whole lot on the table this time around. We just have two our players already downgraded themselves to Galil's Invert, more than likely. He's just going to be able to buy. Oh, goes for a scout, so at least getting some sniper power in for that, but still not a whole lot of utility to make a push work, regardless of where they end up taking it. Once again, it looks like they're just going to set up in this default that they've had. This time, it's going to be a little bit more aggressive out of Luminosity. FNX very quickly pushing up towards Long. And L's and Invert punish that. Fall and FNX fall basically at the same exact time that Scout doing some work from Invert. Now it's first chance. Now he's only got... He switches over actually to the AWP and he's got to fall away. There's someone starting to aggress, but Twist, that second smoke that comes out, slows him down. So a very weakened defense on the Luminosity side. Kekona has a lot of time with basically the entire map to control to figure out where they want to go. Rue sneaking his way up to the site itself. Not going to be able to find a kill, but he does spot Taco and he's going to try and take this duel with him. Colin actually acting as a great distraction up from heaven there. It gives Taco the time to run away, but Ruru is still going to find that kill. Taco with a great flash, able to pop back out and respond with his own pickup on Ruru. But now he's got to hold this back because the push is going to be coming directly into this bomb site. He doesn't even realize it as of yet. Spots the play coming from the left of the pole, but then Twist on the right side, able to shut him down. Burr doesn't want to give up and save quite yet. Wants to go for a little bit more, and he's holding this angle. Nels is going to crash right into it, although he wins that battle. Headshot through the wall. Throws Fur off just a little bit, so a second round for Kekona. Still going to be able to buy, though. Luminosity will. Moving forward, now they switch to a double op setup. So they're switching up the defense. They're going to throw Kekona a little bit of a different look. And will they be ready for it? I mean, that round, two rounds they've won, they've been gifted some early kills. It's the aggression from Fallen and FNX over towards Long and Mid that's that's really been punished. That's all the benefit of that slow start that Kekona has had to these rounds. It's exactly what it's decided to do, is punish that kind of aggression. So it's worked out here, two to six. Ruru's gonna try and be fast. He's the only person at the speed bomb, so he tries to catch him off guard, but just gets ended. No success for Ruru there. And that's what that strat, unfortunately, has its pitfalls. He hates that molly damage very early on. It's unable to find a response target quickly enough. So they're going to shut it down. And now they can continue to be aggressive here, pushing out from the B-bomb site, looking for some more frags themselves. Cold's already pushed out a little bit towards construction. The rest of the team is trying to make an attempt to push over towards Long A with Ocean making some noise down in the connector. But you can already see he's taking some damage there, too. Down to 26 HP. So Luminosity, with these strats being repeated from previous rounds, they're gonna starting to get a read on this. They're starting to have a good idea as to where this may be coming from. So still keeping eyes over towards the connect area in the event they would change it up. But FNX has a good eye to try and watch out for a short push and Fallen with the op, watching out for the long hit. Yeah, Fallen's gonna have a really good opportunity to get some picks if these flashbangs aren't utilized. They only have one left, one just gets thrown out. FNX isn't blind, watching for someone to run through the smoke around the edge of it. Fallen takes a shot but misses. He's still gonna peek more, misses a second shot. Now he's in a little bit of danger. He's gotta fight his way out, he does get one. But him and his teammate fall, so it's all on fur. The rotations are coming in, but they're very far away. He's got to do something here. He can't stop this plant, but it is a three on three. He's going to hide behind the van and just wait for some assistance. That flash from the screen him up, unfortunately. Twist getting aggressive there. They're trying to get a peek on the steps a little bit early on, but Alfer is out in the open. Finds his first pickup, able to take down Invert, follows it up with a second. There's a big stack over towards Long, and he just completely abuses that, and even finishes it up with a third kill. We're getting tagged a little bit there, but still. Unfortunately for Kekonas, that's the big problem again. They get the bomb on the floor, but cannot succeed in that post plant. So Luminosity is still going to continue to stack up another round. Yeah, still not able to string two together with that plant, though. Kekonas should be able to buy. They have three members with over 5,000, so they can get three AKs, a couple Tech 9s, perhaps, to, to really round out a lot of utility. It's actually going to be a scout on Invert. He's going back to that weapon. It did give him success in the last time when FNX pushed up long. He was able to get that kill. Uh, it was either that one around to fall and it was pushed up towards party. But either way, going back to it, still double up set up for Illuminosity as they salvage that. This time it's a little bit different from Kekona. Two members are going to be outside the B bomb site. So looks like they have a little bit of confusion on where they want to go. Ocean has to drop the bomb because he's alone. There's an opening kill from Els. Another good advantage here, but Cold just evens it right back up. Shuts down Els quite nicely. Down to a 4v4 now and with Els going down here. Thankfully still have Ru alive who has sort of been... Pretty, pretty important of pushing himself through a monster and finding these entries, but Luminosity have a lot of insurance posted up here. And it's going to be Cold that finds a pickup onto Ruru now. Twist with a good enough response, able to take down Cold, so drops that up. But still, they're already starting to get a read on it. Fallen's gotten aggressive. He's moved himself inside of the bathroom connector. 
has pretty much full sight as to what's going on here. And with the CT smoke just being tossed into the monster, hey, Kodas are going to have to change up the game plan a little bit here. Ocean's trying to push himself outside connector, but he's being met with trouble from Fur as well. Yeah, Fallen's even on a flank now, so this has got a time limit, this play. He's going to have the op out. Free kill for him. Can he get a second one? He adjusts in time to no scope. Ocean finally finishes him off, but the damage is done. He's been forced into no man's land, and now he's just got to rush over towards the A bomb site. No matter where he picks, there's going to be a defender here. Fur has come over, and he's got the op. Ocean does, so... Yeah, a little bit unwieldy as he tries to take this bomb site, but he hears the footsteps, and Fur just runs right out into the open, so he gives Ocean a chance down to a one on one Taco's going to be rotating up through CT spawn, or up through the spawn stairs, at least. Molotov might slow him down a little bit, but now he's gotten in great position with his AWP. No utility on Taco. And with him playing this as slowly as he has, he's given Ocean all this time to fall back and just get himself into this great post plant. Working against the Ops, so the health pool's not really going to matter all that much, assuming Taco doesn't switch over to the pistol, but Taco's got a pretty good idea as to where to look now as he peeks his way back out. Looking to see if he can grab sights onto Ocean, but not going to find it. Tapping the bomb a little bit, looking for the peak. Good jump from Ocean to bait it out, and Ocean is going to come out with a clutch. 3Ks that round, finishing off Taco. Taco, unfortunately, playing it wrong there, so Kekonis is going to be able to find a third round. You can see a little bit of confidence out of Luminosity that's that's getting punished a little bit. Uh, this was sick by fall, though. This is no scope. Uh, Invert, unfortunately, couldn't get the pistol out in time. But that first uh, cold, he picks up the off. He gets that he gets that really nice pick with a pop flash and goes for a repeat and gets punished. Uh, you know, against another team, I don't think he does that. But just you know, I, I feel like they're just playing with so much confidence right now that the aggression uh, is giving some opportunities to Kekona, and it's been three rounds now that they've taken advantage of it. So with that said, Luminosity, unfortunately, that over-aggressiveness is going to cost them, as now they have to downgrade to go for a little bit of a four-step buy. Very lax on utility here, only two smokes. I think one of them, one more was in the mix on Taco, but he has used it to block off Monster. But beyond this, they don't have HEs, they don't have Mollies, they've only got flashbangs to work with, and also two players being downgraded to a Shotgun on Fallen and SMG on Fur. This is where you can, at times, really see the gap in, in teams who are so strategic with just flashbangs, how they utilize these to pop flash at, at situations where they don't have any advantage, although that time it's just a straight up duel between Twist and FNX. Twist is going to win it out. Now falling on the stairs, he's going to be the next one to be able to challenge. Just the shotgun, though, so he can't really peek up too aggressively. It's going to have to wait and see if anybody comes to peek in his direction there, and then if not, try to execute a flank just like he did in the last round, but this time heading it closer to the A-bomb site. That's a good idea, so that's push, and there's a great shot from him. Taking down L's Furs, also found another kill, the pop flash over, and that should work great to blind the players at the top of the steps, but he's not sticking around. He's falling back to get some more defense on the B-bomb site. This is not with Cedar right now. They need to help out towards A, because okay, Kekonas is still absolutely solidified on going for this push, but this is a nice position from Cold. Nicely done. Invert has no clue he's sitting on the other side of that smoke. He finds that kill for free, but Twist finds a trade, takes him down. Ocean picking up another one, and just like that, we're down to a 2v2. Yeah, Fallen throwing a really weak flashbang, but Twist walks right into the barrel of his Mag 7. Now he switches out to an AK. Once again, all on Ocean and a 1 on 2. He won this last time, but he's got two different angles to be wary of. He knows Fallen is in bank. One's coming up the stairs as well. Who is he going to deal with first? He has Fallen a little bit isolated, but all the meanwhile, Fur wrapping around him, and he can't do it. They juggle the aggression well. Fur's going to get the defuse, but allowing Fallen time to go get the AWP. It's going to be an eighth round for Luminosity. And unfortunately, Ocean just completely outplayed their position. He could not get the cannot get the lock on as to where Luminosity was going to be pushing in or when as well. So he's overwhelmed there. Not able to pick up any of those remaining kills. And Luminosity back in the lead here. Eight to three. Still five ahead of their opponents. And Kekona, with all this juggling of rounds over the past five now, they're going to be run down to essentially nothing. So just going to be upgrading pistols this time. Yeah, not even armor. So they, they get reset. The losing bonus is gone. Only 1,400 that round. Not looking great for them moving forward. Luminosity, though, I mean, they have given some uh, some uh, kills over to him. You can see Taco just using some utility early on to stop any kind of a fast play, but once more aggression. They know they're not going against rifles, so no real danger here of the scout, and Fur just drops two very, very quickly. Ocean just lined right up behind his teammate there, too, so both of them are going to fall extremely fast. Fallen finding another shotgun pickup, able to finish off L's. In the final two. FNX is just playing with his food at this point. Takes down Ruru, ends the round after Fallen picks up another kill on the invert. Fallen's having fun with his shotgun these past couple rounds. He's having a really good time. But it's Fur who's leading the way at 16 and 5. Cold is at 12 and 5, and Fallen is pretty much tied up 12 and 4. So a good half from those three. On this side, Ocean is leading the way, as if there'd be any other outcome. Ocean is just a boss. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the leader of men, Ocean, at the top with eight kills. 
Okay, Kona, they do have three, and if they can get a couple more at the end of this, there's another good start, this aggression out of Luminosity. Okay, Kona's done a great job throughout this half of getting the opening kills due to this aggression. It's just, what can they build behind it now? Nade gonna come out, FNX still challenging. Molotov is gonna put him into an awkward spot. He's gotta fall away. Fallen's very close up with the shotgun, and they're gonna run right into it again. A first kill, can't get off a second shot. Playing a little bit too close there, so unfortunately won't be able to recover. FNX, though, is still alive over there in those tunnels of connector, but Ruru catches a surprise, able to take down Cold, and then follows it up with the second one onto FNX. So all of a sudden, Luminosity tried to continue that aggressive path to try and trade out some of these kills, but it backfires horribly, and it's up to Taco now to clutch in the 1v3, 1v2 on this bomb site for the time being. They have not checked behind the truck, so he's free to move. However, Twitch is just going to peek right out, finds the final frag on to Taco. And there's a fourth round now coming onto the board for the T's. Yeah, this is a really solid half so far from Kikona's up towards four. I mean, there, there's two rounds left. If they actually win this, they could get this up towards six rounds in this half, which would be uh, pretty stellar. But, okay, triple up setup for Luminosity. So they essentially just fully buy out whatever they have left. And this will be interesting to see how they make it work, because it's Fallen, FNX, and Cold with an AWP. FNX with his is going to go towards underpass, fall at the B bomb site, and cold out towards long. There's the opening pick. Nice peek from FNX, and no one's in position to punish it quite yet, so he is going to be able to get away. Flashpink comes out, he's blind, but no pressure. And as well, Ruru is starting that aggressive push over here towards Monster, but he's going to have to be careful as Fallen sitting just on the outside of it. Ready with a pop flash now, but he hit it, and unfortunately, oof, a little off the mark there from Fallen, but still enough damage to be able to take him down through that little pallet in the corner. And for the remaining members of Kate Kona's, they don't really have any position anywhere else on the map. They're all just stuck around Fountain and inside a playground right now. So this is that same problem we saw early on in the half where they just have to try and push together and hope for the best. But LG read it like a book. They're already posted up to try and stop it. First picked up a kill. Cold's found one. L's found a trade, but it's all alone on L's now. And that frag on a fur is the only one they found in this round. Oh, Cold going for the going for the uh, highlight reel shot. And Fallen's just going to take it from behind. Really nicely done from Luminosity in that round, and still, Kekone is not able to string two together. If they, at any point in this half, if they could have strung two together, I mean, this this could have been uh, much, much, it's much, much closer. And now, I mean, look at this buy. They have one AK-47, and they're back onto pistols. I even think that AK-47 was just dropped over from somebody, or no, maybe he just did buy it himself. But either way, not a whole lot to use here. They do have utility on three members. Here's that AWP coming back into play. Cold trying to find an early advantage, but it is a heavy play towards the B bomb site for Kikonas. Now, FNX still playing that same position just outside of Monster, waiting for some pushes to come in his direction. Teammates nading it off quite early here just to make sure they don't get a chance to rush it, but then the smoke follows through. Still, that very slow, passive style of play coming out from Kikonas. Yeah, well, look at Fur. He's about to end it. If Taco doesn't beat him to it, Fur's on a huge flank, and Taco's getting aggressive despite the fire on the ground. He's able to spray down Ocean, and here it comes. Fur just going to spam through the smoke. Gets two kills. And now it's all down to Ruru. And FNX is going to clean that up with the CZ. So 11 to 4 for Luminosity. And not the best half for Kekonas. Like we said, we saw some good things from them, obviously, but the fact that they can never string two together was obviously the biggest negativity working against them. They can never destabilize the economy from Luminosity, despite putting it into an awkward position quite a few times. They were always able to recover with those half buys and those force ups that they were working with, and that immediately rebroke the T's there and just put Kekona down in the dumps. Yeah, that, that was the thing. Their, their, their tactic where they played very slow paced, I mean, it, it worked when they just had three members sit uh, in the playground. Uh, and around Fountain for some time because Luminosity was getting aggressive early on. And even throughout the half, they, they picked some rounds to get aggressive, and Kekona was able to punish it. Uh, it's just building off of that was the struggle and actually stringing two rounds together because you never really did see Luminosity get aggressive two rounds in a row after, after, they, get, after they lost a round because of it. This time, Luminosity, all five members towards this B bomb site. It's looking like it's going to be a very fast play towards this site. Well, they have slowed things down. They are going to take three members into short. Ocean's going to spot that out. So immediately Invert's going to try to re-execute down through Connector to try and line up a flank, but Luminosity are exploding out of this bomb site. However, Ocean finding two picks up their roof, finding another one, and then Ocean picks up a third. Taco is the only response so far, and it's just left down to fall at this point. He somehow manages to sneak through with the bomb plant, but he's stuck inside of that smoke. No mystery at all. As soon as he pops out, Els is going to shut it down. Another big round from Ocean is going to be able to give KK Otis another chance to get back into this game. Yeah, three kills for Ocean. Three big kills some very nice shots. He's the one that initially spots it. That wasn't a kill, but it was a very nice jump. It's those kills there from the corner, too, as they try and enter into the bomb site that slows down Luminosity. Essentially makes it so that plant is the best they could hope for. So Luminosity, likewise, just like uh, Kikona's in the first half, who got the plant and then saved, essentially, in the second round. Luminosity's only going to upgrade pistols, no armor, not too big of an investment. They're going to go for that third round buy. 
So Luminosity is going forward now. That usual split that we see, three players down inside of the tunnels and two more working their way out to the top of A, holding back for the time being to make sure that they're not going to be pushed, but then they explode out through the connector, pushing through short A very, very quickly now. It's going to force Kekonas back onto the site. Here's the danger, though. Oh, no, Twist recovers in time. It didn't seem like they're going to wrap around him, but they've been so cautious against pistol and armor, they all bought rifles. One of those is able to get salvage, which is not so far. That was as, uh, essentially cleaning this up, but Twist, two big opening kills. It looked like he was going to fall there for a moment, but he does recover in time. Cool, that's a nice damage done to Els, but he's just going to fall away. Let Ruru and Ocean take this battle. Cole just trying to see if he can pick up anything else at the end of the round. Nothing else to be found. Ruru closes it out for Kekonas as they rack up a sixth round here. However, Luminosity, no patience at all. They're going to immediately go for this third round by only one plant coming into that first round. Well, because they went for all rifles in that second round, M4s and, and FAMAS, they were only able to salvage one, but they have to rebuy two rifles. So you can see what it's done to the Economy Ocean, Invert, Ruru, all very, very low in terms of their money. So already on danger of being reset if Luminosity can win this round. And this time they've got AK-47s to work with. They've got smokes and flashes. Ocean is going to be the first line of defense. He's alone for the moment. He gets the dink, but not the kill. Now Ruru, he's going to stick around at Sandbacks in the corner, but Luminosity is going to fall away from this one. They're moving back and just going to work their way up through the tunnels once again to get a position over here at the back of the A-push. Twist will be the one to wait for this one as he's sitting patiently at the moment inside of the bathroom connector, watching out for that A-long hit, but not going to be finding it anytime soon as Luminosity have just fallen back. Taco is sticking around to make sure they don't get pushed from that angle, that this evacuation does not be, is not found out. Danger of this for Luminosity is as they come all the way back to the other side of the map, they have plenty of time, but they've had no presence here in this round. So I mean, Kekonas could be pushed up anywhere in the map, and they have to be very cautious of aggressing. And that pop flash over, that's going to blind Twist, and actually he can't pick a target to shoot at. Gets stuck into a spray. And Cold's easily going to take him out, so nicely handled so far. Fur's got to be careful. He's getting flanked from Ruru very quickly. Turns around at the right moment, but he can't get the kill. Ruru finds it, and this is a crucial position on the map for him to hold. So now, with this being held, Luminosity up to a 4v3, having the advantage, but keep in mind, still very little map control, 40 seconds left on the clock, trying to be cautious about where they push this towards, make sure they don't run into anybody and get surprised by the members of Kekona's Ruru. Really the only one that could sort of mess this up at this point is he's positioned himself in water, just below it, trying to watch out and see if he can find a push coming in from Connector, but that's not where it's going to be pushed towards. Everybody outside of Monster right now, getting ready to make an all-in B hit. And they're just going to walk through Monster. Looks like Els has uh, rotated over at least a balcony. You're going to spot it from far away, see if he can land a very nice shot at range. Molotov's going to come out. There's only 10 seconds left on the clock. So that Molotov is designed to try and prevent a plant as long as possible, but it's going to be Ruru who's had the best opportunity to kill the planter, and he's not going to do it. He thinks they're in deep off. They get it down to the smoke. They line up for him. He does get one. And there's Els as well. Down to a two on two situation as they try and retake this bomb site. FNX is going to be towards short sewers. He's very far away. Taco's got to play this smartly but he can't stay alive for long enough. And now Smoke's gonna go out on the bomb. FNX, one hit and he's down. And there it is, Els cleans it up. Three kills for him in the round. That's a huge gun round for Kekonas. They're looking like they're making this doable. And this has been an amazing half so far. I mean, just four rounds in, but we've already seen in two out of four of these, about half, or two, two out of three of these, apologies. Uh, Els has come out with just these huge performances so far. In fact, he's just surpassed Ocean for being the top fragger on this team. So a, a great import performance increase from him and has saved his team quite a lot of sticky situations from going the other direction. Small investment from Luminosity now. They have armor, uh, armor on four players. Tech Nines upgraded pistol, Deagles. Not too much utility, two smokes to utilize, but... Okay, Kona with all the rifles, obviously a massive advantage. Now they're going to do a delayed take into this underpass. Fallen is at the base of these stairs. He's going to get into a battle with Invert, and he's going to win it with a Tech Nine. Twist does respond. That's the bomb, and he gets aggressive onto FNX. Finds one more, and he's got a teammate spamming at the door, but can't get the kill on a taco, so... Taco was able to make progress, and now LC is even being pressured over towards the A-bomb site. This is very messy so far from Kekona. Ruru peeking back up, finds Fur and walking away, so he's not going to be ready for that one. Cole trying to respond with the Deagle, but can't spot anybody getting aggressive on the site. Kekona is just holding back now, playing things passively. LG hoping for something aggressive, but they're not going to be obliged with it. And now they're going to be the ones that have to try and make a move. Taco did a 21 HP, not too much to expect from him. And unfortunately, this waiting around is not going to give them anything. They need to try and go for an aggressive push, however, might finally start to find something, but it's timed not very well at all. Cold starts to creep up just as the members of Kekonas also start to get aggressive. So they're going to get the free angle on the Cole to take him down. And Els even follows it up with a final kill. There's another great round from him, finding two kills once again. Yeah, he shot up to the top of the scoreboard for Kekona. He's bailed him out in a couple tight spots. 15 and 13 for him. So a good match being put together. And again, now Kekona is, is going to be tested. They have the AWP on invert, but likewise Fallen has picked it up on the T side 
for Luminosity, so perhaps a little bit of a duel coming out there. Although Invert is heading over towards Bathrooms, maybe get aggressive towards Fountain, and it does look like he's going to get into Party at least. Fallen's going to be an underpass to that AWP. Brew, aggressive, already posted up by the Fountains area. Nobody even paying attention to that. He finds a first kill on the fur. Invert covering him. Picks up that second pickup now over towards Cold. And Ruru can just push right up to the tunnels. Fallen, not prepared for it. Once again, Ruru finds two kills on a surprise there. And already brings it down to just FNX and Taco. Nasty getting blanked right now in the second half. This is uh, this is really, really rough. K. Konis having a very good start to these rounds on the CT side. That aggression as well, showing they aren't afraid of Luminosity. And they're just going to push forward. Now the bomb is down. Four members of K-Kona surrounds it. And FNX is stuck above ladder. I mean, they're, they're, I think they're buying time for Taco to try and make some play, try and get one kill over towards the B bomb site, maybe alleviate some of the defense. But Ocean's playing it so passively. There's no way Taco's going to be able to find him. 55 seconds left on the clock. Still a lot of ground to recover for LG. And Ocean is hiding right now inside of that CT cubby. Going to see if he can grab Taco, trying to get aggressive in that position. Taco paying attention to it, but not checking it as he rounds the corner. So Ocean way back inside of that cubby. Finds the kill on a Taco for free, and Ruru will finish it off with that pickup onto FNX. So Kikona is now with just within two rounds of tying it up against LG here, and LG only going to be on in half by. Yeah, they have the full losing bonus in their favor. So FNX picks up, he's the one who picks up an AK-47, see if he can get any kind of an impact with that, open things up for the Tech Nines to kind of swarm in. Just one kill is all it takes to spread that defense thin for the Tech Nines to be really, really effective. They have plenty of utility as well if the opportunity presents itself. But it's been the story of this early aggression from K-Kona's has really netted them a few key kills. And Invert is sticking around in bathrooms. LG is going to come up from the stairs, but Molotov holds him back a little bit longer. The defense early on in this round for Kekonas has stabilized and has found good positioning as well. So now with Kekonas still holding those aggressive angles and whatnot, but Luminosity trying to play more together this time around, moving themselves all the way through both the playground area along with that connector to push themselves over towards short A and try to explode out over towards that A bomb set again. They've already tried it before though and it really hasn't gone well, but they look like it finally ends up catching the members of Kekona off guard. Cold. And they're playing around with Invert a little bit, but they allow Twist to remain aggressive. He's going to move in and find two kill, kill pickups, but Taco is still able to take him down to bring it into a three-on-three. Three. Yeah, big kills from Twist, but no one there to support Invert. He had a lot of time to try and survive in an awkward position. Elsa's going to spot this out from long, but FNX says, thanks for the peek. Going to take your head. Taco with this bomb. They're all just going to fall back now. Smoke out towards long. That's going to keep Ocean frozen at this A bomb set, but Ruru still hasn't rotated. They're just saying, all right, we'll play our sights. One of us has got to come up with a big play in a one-on-three situation. As Luminosity transfers through the stairwell over towards B, Ruru's going to readjust over to Toxic Barrels. Try and use this to isolate a one-on-one. -on -one. FNX is going to be the first one in. Ruru's going to spot that. He's got to get more. He gets the opening kill. Down to a two-on-two, -two, but Ocean is here just in time with the nade. And FNX, no HP left. He falls. It looked like it was possible. But even the op is going to be salvaged for Kekonas. 10 to 11 now. They have made this comeback happen. And of course, with Luminosity now finally rounding out their economy to a point where they can get to another buy, this will be their last chance to try and stop this. But we need to see something different from them. We need to see some more innovation when it comes to the way they're playing this T-side because Kekona's have just been stopping them round after round, finding them, and also getting these early pickups almost all of the time. So Luminosity have always been down. And even in these even situations, Kekona's have been able to read it very nicely. Luminosity, of course, not really doing them any favors by, or doing them plenty of favors by giving it away round after round. So with that being said, Kekona is almost always able to hold things. Luminosity finally is able to go for these pushes to the sites. This round's a little bit more measured from Luminosity play, a little bit farther back. They've been punished by some early aggression, and they need to make sure that doesn't happen again. It's exactly, this is very much the setup that Kekona used against them in the first half. So replicating it to prevent any kind of early losses. Taco looks like he wants to get some pressure up towards short. But invert with this op at long. He actually was very exposed there. He could have fallen at any moment. That was a very risky peek into bathrooms. Pop flash comes out, barely blinds him, and he's going to hide behind this wall. He's just waiting to hear the pop flash sound before peeking again. There's one nade. They've jumped out. They've got the angle now, and that was a little bit of a mistake from invert, playing with the edge a little bit too much. Fallen, picking up that shot on to invert, and now the rest of Luminosity going to start pushing up. Twist moves over just around the flower box there to see if he can take his place. But for the time being, Luminosity, they're going to be happy with that pickup on the invert. And they're holding back now to run the timer in a little bit more. Smart by LG, though. They take long control, and then they walk through bathrooms, but they leave FNX to wait for some kind of a pop flash peek. They know Twist, or someone more than likely, is going to try and grab some information, and there it is. 
FNX punishes it. Really well done. Els is far back, stuck over at long. Pressure being put onto this A bomb site. Els has got a big job to do. Furt checks it, does massive damage, but he can't get the kill. Molotov to slow down at long. There's cold. Ruru has rotated over to the truck, and Ocean as well gets a big kill. It's a three on two, and actually, oh, there's Fallen. He doesn't expect that from Ruru whatsoever. Ocean gets aggressive, but he turns the wrong way. Ruru's gonna get another free kill on a taco. Down to a one on one. Five seconds left. This bomb has got to get planted. Oh, and FNX playing a dangerous game here at the time. Might just run out, but it doesn't matter because Ruru gets the kill anyways. 11 to 11. Survives with 2 HP, recovers the op for his team, and now he's going to be able to just toss that right back over. These guys are still sitting on enough money anyway, so that's going to save Ocean or whoever this gets tossed over. Invert, of course, plenty of money. Big plays from Ruru there to be able to save that nice hold on the A bomb site. And Kekonas have managed to tie it up against LG here. 11 to 11, and it's another round where LG cannot afford to put up a, put up a significant buy. Yeah, this is very similar to the last force by one AK-47 onto FNX to see if he can get them an opening kill for these Tech Nines to do the damage. That smoke's gonna come out to block off Monster, though. So LG gets slowed down. Three of them converging over towards short. Two members, three actually defending this B bomb site. Well, Twist and Invert are aggressive down stairwell. They're gonna have a quick crunch, and there it is. Invert with the off kill. Ruru, he's blind, but trying to spray through the smoke. He can't find it. Does a lot of damage. Really, a new monster shouldn't be able to get too much more off this, although Ocean just gets beaten up by the pistol of Fallen. And it's going to be a 12th round for Kekonos. Ball the last one left alive there. Tries to surprise at least one more pickup, but it's not going to happen. Invert shuts it down onto Fallen. And Luminosity still with not a single round on the board in this entire half. It's now eight rounds in a row for Kekonos. Now this match, if, if Luminosity does happen to lose it, it's not like it's crippling them. They're still very much in first place, but what it doesn't do is help them solidify that. There are still players knocking at the door to overtake them in that first spot. And actually with Cloud9 and fifth seed as close as they are to the top four, this actually opens up the opportunity for later on in the season for them to drop out if they continue dropping matches. Invert taking a duel early, but there's a lot of flashbang pressure coming in for Luminosity. Twist, though, is able to cover that from Connector, at least for one pickup. He takes down Fallen. Taco trades him out, but then Ruru peaks, as does Invert, finding two more. But Burr, nicely down on the spray control, takes down both Invert and Ruru to bring it back into the reins of LG. Can Kekonas do it again? Els is going to lose that duel to the Tech Knight of FNX, and Ocean is so far away. He's at the B bomb site. LG still hasn't decided where they want to go. Ocean's essentially got to make a gamble. Essentially flip a coin in his head and say, I want to go B or I want to go A. And here's all these nades raining out at the A bombs. It looked like he was going to stick around towards B, which... I mean, there's a minute left for Ocean's mind to just be toyed with by Luminosity. So this is a little bit of a tough situation for Ocean to read. And Ocean now just going to be shifting back and forth between these sites until he can get a good read on it. But LG just ship walking at this point over there towards A-Long. And they're going to creep their way over to that A-Bomb site. No pressure on them at all. Especially with Ocean all the way down in that B-Bomb site right now. Just peeking out from CT Main. And very, very far away from the A site. But it looks like he may be going back in a moment. So he may be catching this just as that bomb is going down. And that's at a point where LG may be at their most vulnerable. The tough part is he's got to walk. Doesn't want to give up his position as he tries to retake this. His best opportunity to find a kill is when this bomb starts getting planted. It'll be a one-on-one -on -one with the other member. Fur is planning it in default, and FNX watching for that. Snaps off a kill very quickly. That is the first round of the half for Luminosity, tied up 12 to 12 now. Coming down to the wire, now they have the task of stringing a couple of rounds together, and actually they've done enough, enough damage in these past few rounds to make this, uh, you know, there's still a strong buyout for Kekonas, but a little bit lacking in some of the utility on a couple players. No head armor, and Ocean's only going to be on a 5-7. That's the big thing, right? Of course, these weren't necessarily just, just, just cut through rounds for uh, for Kekona shutting it down against LG. We saw a couple of those, but they've been slowly trading it back a little bit here, and it's been coming down to these to just two, one, or three players that's alive all the time from Kekona, so it hasn't always been a clean sweep. So the economy's never really built up from the CT side, and now if Luminosity can keep their round gain significant, which was the issue for Kekona in the last half, then they can very quickly break the CTs and take their lead back. Very slow play still again. Luminosity, two members coming up from the stairwell, two coming out from Fallon. Crunching into this, and Fallon has the angle. Elsa peeks right into it, falls into the trap. Opening kill for Luminosity, and still they haven't moved forward. Still very patient. Opportunity for an equalizer. Fur gets behind the rocket long. He does massive damage to Invert, but Twist is there to find it. Down to a four on four again, and Twist still in bathrooms. Luminosity hasn't gained control of this. Actually, Cold and Fallon didn't seem like they wanted to consider it until just now. Cold readjusts, finds him through the edge of the smoke. It's going to be able to pick up that kill, and now everything's clear as day for the time being for the members of LG, but not going to be making the push to the A-bomb, so just trying to psych him out a little bit, and it's working, too. 
Two have been fully committed to this A-side. Ocean even going to start to push out and see what he can find here. Catches himself a duel versus Fallen, but all it's going to do is scare him a little bit. And Ruru sitting inside of CT main. He's going to have to make a call eventually here as to how he wants to play this. Recommitting himself, just moving over there on top of the mound inside a pit. So he's going to be sticking around, but there's a storm coming his way. He's got to try to fend off three players at once, and he just placed himself in a corner, so that's definitely not going to do himself any favors. Cole takes him down, and the T's get control of the B bomb site. Looks like Ocean and Invert. Smart decision here out of these two guys would just be to save their weapons. Fallen's here to cut it off, though. He's going to peek out and get that kill onto Ocean. He knows Invert is somewhere around. Jumping around, making plenty of noise, and Invert's going to get that kill. So Fallen goes down. FNX now coming up the stairs. It's his turn to challenge Invert. He's trying to make his way out towards Long. But he's got this angle. Leg shot onto FNX. Pulls out the pistol. He knows he's tagged him. Not getting aggressive, though, and FNX Ooh. is just able to pre-fire the corner. Picks up the AWP as well. That's a 13th round for Luminosity. And now the money is gone from Kona, So they're going to have to save for one. And the question is, they've made this massive comeback. They've come all the way from a 11 to 4 first half. And Luminosity has regained control of the match. But can Kona's can they break them? They have one last gun round to do it in. So with Luminosity back in control of the lead here, and solidifyingly so, of course, but just breaking Kona's economy. Now the question is, what is Kekona going to try and do in this round to destabilize it a little bit to try and find some more damage under the board? And well, it's not going to start off so well with Taco shutting down an aggressive attempt to push over towards water. Both Ruru and Els, two of the biggest fraggers so far in this match, go down to the ground. That's another play that sort of dropped off a little bit. We talked about at the beginning of the half about Els having some of these crazy plays, but we really didn't see much of that afterwards in this round. Unfortunately, just going to be a complete whitewash. Luminosity, five frags, almost a team ace to Taco. A little bit greedy there, finding two of his own, but no frags at all go on to the members of Luminosity, and they get to build up very early here. Yeah, playing for map point here. And what is Kikona's bringing to the table? No AWP is going to be able to be bought. Four M4s at the moment. Elsa's got money for it. I'm unsure why he's not buying. He hasn't even left spawn, so... There he is, finally, getting some, getting some guns on the board. Not really that important of a round, no reason to uh, feel too much pressure. Thankfully for him, though, Luminosity is playing a pretty passive setup right now. Well, they've been put in their place, right? Mm -hmm. Like, surprisingly, Kekona's early on in this half, the aggression just obliterated some of the, some of the offensive tactics that Luminosity wanted to run, so now they've had to slow it down. An ocean. Placing himself now just outside of the Monsterian. Twist has this bit of a stack, or this little bit of a boost going to on top of the sign which can either be, it's basically going to be north or south when it comes to that position there. You're either going to pick up a kill and be able to fall back nicely or just going to be absolutely obliterated because it's not a very well-hidden position right there. But most of LG sending their assets over there towards long A for the time being. Short A going to be executing at the same time, but they've only really got one or two players pushing that, mainly coming in from Fur at this point. That smoke uh, that's thrown up by Luminosity out towards long generally that is often used for the terrorist team to push up right behind it and just kind of explode through the smoke or explode right when it fades. So Kekona's actually cheating players over towards the A bomb site, but Luminosity has faked them out completely. Cold's the only one at long. Four members are going to hit this B bomb site. Fur at door, three are going to come through Monster, and Kekona's has just now realized that Ocean has just gotten back, but Cold gets that kill. If he can get one more, that will force rotations. No one has spotted this B hit, and Roshan is rotating back towards A. This is fantastic tactical play from Luminosity. They have a massive advantage. Ruru's got to do something, but the bomb is being planted. Smokes are 2 0 converging at this point. So Ocean is going to be the player that strikes first after Taco manages to take down his teammate Ruru. Falling back inside of that CT cubby where he's been able to pull up some nice plays before, but now he has to get aggressive. He can't just hide here anymore. He's going to continue to push up on top of the planks right now, looking for that frag, and he does manage to find a frag onto FNX there. Invert finding another one too, but then Fallen inside a monster, paying to pick up on Invert. Falling back out of the site, Cold 2 sitting in construction right now, but Ocean, he's tapped that bomb, he's sticking it, but it's a full 10 second defuse, he stops it though and finds another pickup down to a 1v1, he needs to stick it at this point, but Fallen's going to be able to walk in, shut him down, and Luminosity, now we're going to be just one round away. Yeah, it looks like they've survived a scare, at least for a moment, there's one more opportunity for Kekonas, now they have to force overtime, they have to win three straight. One eight to open up this half, but since Luminosity game control of the economy, it's been all them, and the buy coming out on the defensive side is not very strong. M4 on Ocean, no utility. Scout, UMP, and upgraded pistols for his remaining teammates. And it's a full, everything that Luminosity could want. Four AKs with full utility, AWP on Fallen as well. Now we're seeing some of these Molotovs in the stairwell to help gain control. So, Kekona's... Stacking their players up with that aggressive push, but they need to make sure that Luminosity is not too good of a read on this because they could very easily just wipe themselves down over there. 
back their T spawn and wrap around to the B bomb site where the defenses are very weak, mainly only having L's and Re Ocean in good positions to try and hold off this site for the time being. And that's assuming L's is able to catch this too, as right now he's going closer over there towards short A, where he's going to be completely out of the way to try and stop a hit here. But there we go, Ruru decides to get aggressive, pushes through, and that nets him an early kill on the fur. Yeah, Cold can't return on it either. L's now in the stairwell. He might be the next stop. Cold gets one kill. Taco falls, though. So stairs currently held by Kakoda. Oh, and uh, Fallen misses that shot, and he gets punished. So down to a two on four. Scary situation now, as Kakoda has made this round. It's given him an advantage, but there's a good find from Cold. Again, having impact in the mid-rounds. Kakoda's is split across the map. Twist is all on his own. So is Ruru in the A bomb site, but they're not going to expect Twist to be here. He's going to have a very fast flank. They're pushing right up into the A bomb site aggressively. And there it is. Twist with the flight to CZ. Doesn't hit the initial shots, but he does recover on FNX. Now all down to Cold. He's got to go for the ace. And Twist with the scout is going to end it. So he's bought his team a little bit of life. Just a little bit here now. Is they're going to be able to reinvest with Luminosity, building themselves up very quickly after they finally started winning those rounds four in a row. And they've got plenty of money left to go for another buy up here. Cold specifically sitting at 7.1k. That's going to be enough to justify the double op setup. That's coming in now on from both Cold and Fallen. Whereas Kinkodas, they're able to upgrade to the rifles and they get utility behind it, but no op, unfortunately, coming on to invert. Yeah, double op setup and switch from the offensive side. Two ops, one on Fallen, one on Cold. Invert gets pushed back with nades. Returns one of his own, doesn't do any damage, but this is different. This is fast paced from Luminosity. Even with two AWPs, they're being very, very swift in trying to take over this bathroom control. They've forced Kekona's back as well, so it's worked. They've forced a little bit of utility out. Smoke comes out very, very early, so there's going to be plenty of time when this dissipates for LG to work this A bomb site, especially with two AWPs. So Cold taking it back for the time being, watching out for the monster push in the event the CTs would like to get aggressive there. Let's see if they can find any pickups, but not going to be the case. Falling back now through those tunnels. It's going to be regrouping with the rest of Luminosity, who are definitely trying to go for the A hit. But the problem is both Twist and Invert now decided to get aggressive. They pushed up. They've already taken down Fur. They're going to succeed in taking down FNX as well as after another trade occurs. Now Fallen Blind, but he switches over to the rifle. Molotov out as well. And he's got a teammate at long, F Invert. He's trying to hold strong. No HP. Taco and Fallen open things up. Two kills for them, and this forces a rotation from Ruru and Ocean. They've left the B bomb site. They're over at A. Taco's still bombing nades into that site, but it's all a ruse. Luminosity is going to fall back towards the B bomb site, or are they? They actually stopped this, so 40 seconds left. They're going to force K Konas to be the ones that have to make a decision. Which bomb site do you want to cover, or are you going to split up and give us a three on one? Ruru's Ru Ru going to panic there. He ends up going down to the B bomb site. Ocean following as well, so they give up full control, and the very slow pace play from Luminosity now is going to pay off the foul fallback. And they can push themselves back up to A pretty casually here, too. They split the remaining two players. Ocean goes up to check. He doesn't spot anything. So he's going to head down towards Heaven, and now he realizes it because he can hear the footsteps. But they're completely off the site, and he has to call Ruru in for assistance as well. Does not want to try and attempt this alone. This is multiple rounds. LG has just pulled apart this defense with fire rotations, and Taco's going to get that kill on a Ruru all onto Ocean. One on three situation. Taco's low. He's going to swing out. He's going to grab that kill. Now he's got to get aggressive. Cold's holding this with an off, though. He misses the shot, but Fallen's there to back him up. That's it. The comeback gets stopped cold by Luminosity. I mean, what a scare. We did not think that was going to be any, anywhere near that kind of a match. Kekona is coming up big uh, and making that comeback. Uh, very, very impressive. Definitely some rounds, especially in the first half there, too, where Luminosity might have not been taking the match as seriously as they could have. We saw those spouts of aggression there. They felt really confident about their pushes and whatnot and keeping the SMGs in play for so long. Did end up costing them a little bit there, so we saw some good trades happening on the rounds from that right. first half. However, Kona's weren't able to stack up that many rounds. The second half, they really came alive into that monster round streak, like eight or nine in a row. Yeah, the first half, it did look like they, they gained a lot of these. Uh, this, was, this was pretty dirty from Taco. That's just not even fair, but it did look like they gained some of these rounds off over aggression, overconfidence from Luminosity, but the second half was all Kekonas. I mean, from an early start, they went on that eight round run, run and it was really just the fact that they punished Luminosity. They, they put them in their place a little bit. They got aggressive, they got up in their face, they were very confident, they won a lot of duels as well, but Luminosity, once they gained control of the economy, you could see uh, it's essentially all over. So close, but no cigar for Kekonas in this one to get their first win of the season. This round was just impressive. I mean, the amount of clutch rounds, around, the amount of situationals that Kekona's won in that second half was incredible. And it all comes down to, to some very big performances from Ocean. Ruru and Els as well. Els, at the beginning of that second half, was a big part of that eight-round streak. We saw a lot from him. Sort of fell off the sort of fell off the top of the fragging chain a little bit there towards the end, but I think he was still first or second on the board. Ruru, of course, consistent as we were talking about before the match, and then another good match from Ocean, too, as he pulled off a couple of those very important clutches to keep them in that match in terms of the scoreline.
Well, it was an exciting first match. Kikonas gave us a, a good show, and they are going to take a quick break between maps because this is going to be a second map in the doubleheader is also between uh, Luminosity and Kikonas. So we're going to take a break with them. So we'll be right back in just a few minutes with that second map.